Take your Bible, Psalm 139. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there's not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, and I cannot attain unto it. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. Glad, God, I'm glad I know I'm saved. A lot of things I don't know, but I do know I'm saved. I was there the night you saved me. You changed me. Put me on this path called straight. And Father, I bless your holy name. God, I'm thankful. Oh, Lord, and you're worthy to be thanked. We've got so much to thank you for. And God, I'm glad you're faithful. And you've been faithful to me. And Father, thank you for the good testimonies. Oh, Lord, of how you've blessed and how you've taken care and provided. And God, you've been good and you've given assurance. And God, you've watched over and touched. And God, we just bless you for how great you really are. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd bless and honor the reading of the Word of God. And God, you'd bless and touch and help folks. Uh, Lord, as we just uh, read, you know our down-sitting, our uprising. You know our, the intents of our hearts. You know our words from afar off. You know all about us. God, you know every need of every heart in here today. God, people are not here by accident or chance. You have coordinated and worked uh, in some instances uh, for a long time in order to orchestrate and bring us all together today. God, you've given a message, uh, uh, Lord, that'll help each and every one if they'll heed and listen to what thus saith the Lord. Uh, God, I pray if there's anybody amongst us unsaved, uh, God, we'd see them saved today. Uh, Father, I pray if there's any amongst us today who's struggling, uh, who's filled with doubt, uh, who's filled with questions, uh, God, I pray uh, that, Lord, a wave of assurance would come their way today. Uh, Father, I pray if there's any sickly amongst us, uh, God, you'd touch their bodies, for you are the great physician. Uh, God, I pray if there's any indifferent amongst us today, uh, God, you'd work in their heart uh, and help them to get on the same page as God. Uh, God, I pray if there's anybody here today uh, just low, uh, just really struggling, uh, God, I pray you'd undergird them uh, and you'd lift them up, uh, and God, you'd encourage them. Uh, God, thank you for bringing some back that's been on vacation. Uh, God, thanks for bringing some back that's not been well. Uh, God, thanks for bringing some back, uh, Lord, who haven't got to be here. Uh, Lord, thank you for those uh, that have been here. Uh, thank you for those that worked on the grounds, uh, those that cleaned the church. Uh, those that pay their tithes and give an offering uh, that the lights are on, that the air conditioning works, uh, all that has went in uh, to us be able to come. Uh, thank you for those that have prayed, uh, those that have studied, uh, those that have come ready. Uh, God, just thank you uh, for all you've done uh, and what you're going to do. Uh, use this unworthy vessel and we'll bless you and praise you. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we do ask these things. Uh, Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, I want you to notice as a way of introduction uh, just a few things. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, uh, the understanding of God or the omniscience of God. Uh, we find in this chapter, uh, in verse number 1, the Bible says, uh, O Lord, Thou uh, hast searched me uh, and known me. Uh, friend, you may think you've got it hid from me, and you probably do. Uh, you may think you've got it hid from your family. Uh, you may think you've got it hid from your co-workers uh, and your neighbors, uh, and you might well. Uh, but there's one person you can't fool, uh, and you can't hide it from. Uh, his name is Almighty God. Uh, uh, verse 2 says, Thou knowest uh, my downsitting, my uprising. Uh, thou understandest my thought afar off. Uh, thou compassest my path, uh, 
and my lying down uh, and art acquainted with all my ways uh, for there's not a word in my tongue but lo O oh Lord thou knowest it uh, all together uh, uh, friend God knows you better than you know you uh, uh, you don't even know your own heart uh, the Bible says it's deceitfully wicked and no man knoweth it uh, but God knows your heart uh, he knows the number of the hairs on your head uh, he knows where you've been uh, he knows where you are uh, and friend he even knows where you're headed uh, hey if he is that wonderful uh, and that knowledgeable uh, I want to understand him uh, I want to hang with him uh, I want him directing my path uh, we find the understanding of God mentioned in these verses I want you to notice the unworthiness of, this, of, the, of the servant look in verse 6 he says such knowledge is too wonderful for me it is high and I cannot attain unto it and God told Job uh, where were you when I made the heavens and the earth where was your counsel when I created everything who can figure out God it's too wonderful for our little peanut brains we're finite he's infinite he is way past our finding out we can't understand him his ways are mysterious I don't know why God made a black cow eat green grass and give white milk I don't understand that but God did it huh I don't know how I can flip a light switch and the lights come on. Uh, all you can explain to me about the wires and all that, I just still don't understand it. Uh, but long before Edison uh, 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 made the light bulb and long before uh, Ben Franklin tied a key to a kite, uh, uh, God was sending lightning and electricity to this world. Uh, hey, his ways are past fight. Uh, I don't know why a great God uh, who is uh, uh, made up of three personalities, but he's one God he's the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost uh, I can't understand that uh, but the Bible says it so uh, I can't understand how this great uh, uh, triune God who is holy uh, who's righteous uh, who cannot even be tempted with evil uh, uh, this great God uh, who is so holy uh, there are special angels flying around him just telling everybody in glory uh, he's holy 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 uh, and why this holy God uh, would look at me in pity and love uh, know all about me uh, know my failures, know my faults uh, know my shortcomings uh, know my inabilities uh, and still would love me uh, and give himself for me uh, and make a way that I could be like him someday uh, that is way past my understanding brother Donald uh, but I'm glad he did uh, and I'm glad he made a way uh, and one day we'll know all about it it, uh, but he said I'm unworthy this is too great for me to attain notice uh, brother Doug he didn't say I'm worthless he said I, I, this is too big for me he said I'm unworthy of this great God notice if you will the ubiquitous of God or the omnipresence of God He's everywhere all the time. Look at verse 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the other most parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. You know what the psalmist said? You can't get away from God. No matter where you are, you're going to bump into him. He's there. He's everywhere all the time. He knows everything. He's everywhere. By the way, he's also omnipotent. He has all power. Uh, there's nothing greater than God. You come to church and you act all holy. But when you're alone and it eats at you, that's God. And see, you can, you can put on a front for a little while. But when you get all the way far away from church and alone, God's still there. When you lay down on your bed at night and you try to go to sleep... Uh, that thought that haunts you that you need to get right with God that's God he's dealing with you 
The prodigal tried to outrun the father. Can't do it. Uh, notice, if you will, the unmerited favor of God in verse 14. Verse 14 says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Let me just stop right there. God don't make any junk. And let me help you with something else. God is, doesn't have a cookie cutter to make people. He doesn't have a mold to make people. When he made you, he broke the mold. You're your, only you. Huh? You got fingerprints that identify you. You have traits that identify you. You have a DNA that identifies you. God made you. Say, well, I don't look like so-and-so. You ought to thank the Lord. <laughs> Say, well, I'm not slim, or I'm not tall, or I'm not that. God made you. He fearfully and wonderfully made you. The science behind how you are here, and he goes on to describe a lot of this, uh, how he formed you in the belly. Uh, it's, it's a miraculous thing that you're here. And God made you just like you. And I got news for you. God loves you the way you are. God doesn't say you have to be like Brother Tommy to be loved. God loves you the way you are. And God can never love you any more than he loves you right now. And God can never love you any less than he loves you right now. God loves you for God is love. He made you and he loves you. He is absolutely thrilled to be in love with you. Mm -mm. I'm talking about the unmerited favor of God. You didn't earn that. He loves you. I want to tell you something. Every mama, every God-fearing mama loves her child more than life itself. And God proved to us that he loved us more than life himself because he gave his life for us. He says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't let somebody tell you you're lesser. Don't let somebody tell you because you don't fit a certain image or because you don't uh, uh, arise to a certain status or because uh, you don't have something that you're lesser. God loves you. God loves you so much that he bankrupt all of heaven for you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Look what it says. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was uh, made in secret and curiously wrought in the lower, lowest parts of the earth. Uh, thine eyes did see my substance, uh, yet being imperfect. Miss Brittany said she failed God every day. You're welcome to the club. Uh, we all do. But God looked at us even though we were imperfect, uh, and he still loved us. Uh, he said, uh, and in thy book all my members were written, uh, which in continuance were fashioned, uh, when as yet there was none of them. Uh, how precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. Uh, how great is the sum of them. Uh, if I could, should count them, uh, they are more than in, in number than uh, the sand. When I wake, I'm still with thee. Uh, he's saying, my dear friends, how precious it is uh, that God even has us in his thoughts. Uh, and he does. Uh, and he blesses. And he's so good. If we used to count the good thoughts he has for us, uh, it's more than the sand. We could not from, uh, he's just saying uh, thank God for grace in the unmerited favor of God and then we see an unusual request look how this chapter ends verse 23 he says search me O God and know my heart try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. He says, when I think that God knows all about me, and when I think that wherever I go, God is there, and when I think about that God made me and he de developed me and he put all this together in me and the thoughts of me uh, 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 he just loves me and the sum of the, him even thinking about me it's just uh, uh, too much for me to even consider uh, he says when God is that good to love me and show me his grace uh, and to die for me and do all that he's done he says one request God you've done all that I want you to search me, try me, 
look at my life and if there's anything that doesn't please you if you find any wicked way in me Lord show me that I can make it right lead me into the everlasting way I want to be right with you because of all that you've done for me what a psalm what a psalm I'm interested in verse number 5 the psalmist says thou hast beset me behind and before that means God's behind me and he's in front of me hmm. isn't it wonderful to have the protection of God on your life uh, I'm glad he leads me and I'm glad he's got my back but look what he says here and laid thine hand upon me I got to reading that the other day and I got to thinking about God putting his hand on me almighty God cared enough to reach down to me I want to preach on the touch of God there's nothing like when God touches your life can I say God made us human beings people that need people and people that have feelings and emotions and we like other people uh, uh, to empathize with us and uh, uh, there's nothing like God giving you somebody to love you can hold hands with and touch uh, and there's nothing like uh, uh, having a church family when you're down and you can come in and somebody hugs you and embraces you and their touch uh, is a blessing uh, but can I say there's no touch, uh, there's no emotion uh, there's no feeling uh, there's no help like you could ever get uh, like the touch of God uh, hey uh, when you realize the great God of glory uh, Ah, the wonderful one, uh, the mighty one, the counselor, the everlasting father, uh, uh, the prince of peace. Uh, uh, when he, my dear friends, uh, reaches all the way down from glory uh, and he touches your life uh, and he touches your heart uh, and he touches your infirmity uh, and he touches whatever you're going through. Uh, hey, no wonder folks can get up and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, no wonder folks can get up and sing, I just want to thank him. Uh, no wonder folks can get up and sing he's been faithful uh, hey no wonder folks can get up and say I'll lay my Isaac down uh, because I've been touched by the master uh, hey if God ever touches your life uh, nothing else will matter uh, when God walks into the midst of your troubles uh, and he puts his hand on you uh, and he says it'll be alright uh, there's nothing like the touch of God uh, hey uh, when the glory world comes to where you are uh, and lights in on you uh, a friend uh, it'll make a change in your life uh, thank God for the touch of God boy there's been times when I've been low wondering if I could go another step uh, and one touch uh, gets me running laps uh, one touch will get me out of the mully grubs. Uh, one touch will get me to the mountaintop. Uh, one touch uh, gives peace uh, and strength uh, that this world doesn't know anything about. Thank God for the touch of God. Could I say, first of all, the touch of God will satisfy every longing. All there are folks that will sell their soul for this world's riches and this world's goods. There are folks that will sell out every conviction to live in a certain neighborhood. But I want to help you something. You ever get the touch of God on your life? Can I say, all you need to say is satisfied. <laughs> oh, I'm content with all that I have because I have the touch of the Master's hand. I'll never forget the third Saturday night of March, 1974, sitting in the Afton Baptist Church, about three quarters of the way back on the left-hand side. Hey, God walked into that place that night, and he touched me. That night I went to the altar. I called on God, and he saved my never-dying soul. I'll never get my white-haired granddaddy, a massive man. He looked down at me and said, Boy, are you satisfied? Brother Bob, I'm telling you, I'm still satisfied in the Master's touch. There's nothing like when God touches your life. Everything's okay. I'm satisfied in the work He done for me. I'm satisfied in how He's blessed my life. I'm satisfied in everything God's done for me. 
You talk about address, I'm moving to Hallelujah Boulevard one day. Huh? You talk about riches. My father owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and it's all mine. Hey, I bless the holy name of Jesus. First touch. He'll satisfy every longing. I find everything I truly long for is all in him. Huh? Nobody can watch over my children like he does. Nobody can meet every need like he does. <laughs> Brother Randy, uh, <laughs> hallelujah, ain't had a full check. <laughs> but yeah, you're satisfied, aren't you? <laughs> He's been good. <laughs> He's a good God. <laughs> hey, every need supplied. Can I say this? The touch of God will soothe every wound. Mm. One thing about being human, having feelings and emotions, we get hurt a lot. Can I say the unseen scars are the ones that hurt the most? Somebody ripped your heart out of your chest. And somebody cuts you to the core. I've seen folks on fire for God. An old deadhead Christian say something to them and quench their fire. Well, not long, they're out of church. Hurt. Hurt in the house of God. I've seen preachers cut people down and hurt them. I've seen a, 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 a home that once was built on love get divided by hurt. I've seen children hurt. I want to tell you, pain is pain. And pain hurts. And some pain hurts more than other pain. It's one thing if somebody don't know me talks about me like a dog. But when it's somebody that says they're for you, it hurts. It hurts. But can I help you with something? Oh, you'll still have scars. And you'll still have memories. But the touch of God will soothe every wound. When God, with the balm of Gilead, gets to rubbing on you, the wounds get mollified are you listening mm, can I say the hurt gets diminished uh, can I say uh, uh, the scar gets smaller uh, when you realize the nail scarred hands uh, that died for you uh, now puts his hands on you uh, all of a sudden your scars aren't as big as they used to be uh, all of a sudden your pain don't hurt like it used to uh, he can soothe your pain uh, he can soothe your wounds uh, he can help you uh, I've seen some that you'd never think would ever get up uh, not only get up uh, but get to going uh, I've seen some uh, you thought you'd never hear from them again uh, uh, the touch of God now they're shouting the victory uh, I've seen some say I'll never sing again uh, but the mighty master's hand touch them uh, and now they're singing God's glory uh, hey, I've seen some say I'll never preach again uh, but the master touch them uh, and they're preaching the gospel uh, you say what happens uh, I'm telling you the master's touch uh, it'll satisfy every life and it'll soothe every wound. Uh, can I say this? The touch of God will spark a fire in the midst of dead and coldness. That's what he's done right here. Just the touch of God. It sparks something that's everlasting. It sparks something from another world. It's supernatural. It sparks something that cannot be denied. And it sparks something that can't be quenched as long as you just keep fanning the flame. Mm. Thank God for the touch of God. Listen, it's different preaching when God's touched it when God hadn't touched it. It's different singing when God's touched it and God hadn't touched it. It's different giving out a gospel tract and telling somebody about Jesus when God's touched it and when he hadn't touched it. It's different going to work when God's hand's on you and when he had Are you listening? Uh, it's just better when God touches you. I got to think about this. The touch of God sentence sinners. It'll sentence a sinner. Mm -mm. You see, without God touching them, they don't know they're a sinner. There's a lot of folks that are morally good, a lot of folks that are religious, a lot of morally religious people. There's a lot of people that go to churches every time the doors are open, but they don't know Jesus. 
because they're not in an environment where God works because if his word's not being preached he's not there and they never get touched by God but when God gets to sinners and touches them he sentences them can I say his touch first of all condemns them it reveals unto them they're not what they thought they were it reveals unto them they're not right with him some brother Bob are church members hmm? raised in church made professions of faith been baptized and then God touched them and say yeah but you're not saved hmm? do you know why the media got so upset when President Trump held up a Bible in front of a church because the word of God reveals God and God condemns people that don't know him bless God I hope he goes out this week and holds up too or get a big one like mine huh? it condemns the touch of God also convicts see it's one thing no you're not right with God it's another thing when God shows you you're guilty before God and that's what conviction does now can I say this too many preachers try to do the convicting try to make people feel guilty brother Clint that's the Holy Ghost's job when he touches people guess what he'll show them they're guilty they're a sinner they have no legs to stand on before God see his touch sentences them it condemns them it convicts them and then it convinces them it reveals unto them they're guilty but it convinces them they can be saved you see they'll argue with God well I'm, I'm so guilty I can't be saved I've done this and I've done that and I was raised this way and I saw this and I've been involved in that and I've been involved and then that same touch well see I know all that but I love you anyway will you come unto me and he convinces them to leave their excuses behind and trust in the Lord brother Bob must have been hard sitting on that church pew being a church member knowing everybody thought you saved but finally you couldn't take anymore he convinced you you need him and you got that 18 inches settled you had a head knowledge but 18 inches lower was your heart and you got heart knowledge uh, and nobody can talk you out of being saved now because you was there when it happened hmm? uh, uh, see the touch of God did that hmm? the touch of God brought a sentence of guilt to a sinner and convinced him he needed to be saved and now he sits there a saint what a God let me say this the touch of God substantiates every sacrifice the Bible says that you and I will reap what we sow the Bible says that our labor in the Lord is not in vain anything you do for God's glory will be substantiated when he touches you matter of fact if you don't do anything for his glory I doubt he will touch you but when you sacrifice and you do things for God God takes notice two weeks ago I spent several days fasting I didn't even tell Miss Annette I didn't know if I was going to South Carolina to preach I didn't know if we was going to have revival I didn't know what so I just needed some direction from God boy God sure did honor it he's honored it in the preaching he's honored it in our services every sacrifice is substantiated matter of fact it'd do some of you good this week going into revival and, and listen when we had that message about giving the Lord an hour a day I've noticed the difference in a lot of you a lot of you have been doing that now you're going, you've done it now two weeks and it got a little harder this week because the devil fighting you because we announced revival meets coming but I want to challenge you to take it a step farther not only give him an hour why don't you give up something this week bless God wouldn't hurt some of you give up some food but why don't you give up something for his glory why don't some of you turn off some of that social media this week huh? just start praying and seeking God Instead of seeking everybody else's approval on social media, seek God's approval. Huh? 
Why don't some of you turn off the goofy news this week? Huh? Unless they're on your street burning your street down, you don't need to worry about it, huh? Uh, just turn it off and give that time to just meditate on how good God is. Just spend that time saying, God, I just want to thank you. And start thanking him for everything. Thank him for your house. Thank him for your clothes. Thank him for your job. Thank him for a little change in your pocket. Just start thanking him for everything. Thank him for the flowers. Thank him for the birds singing outside. Just thank him for being a good God. Just spend that time thanking God instead of watching that uh, fake news all week long. Hmm? Huh? Why don't you just give up something this week going into revival? Whatever it is, just give up something for God and watch God substantiate your sacrifice. Hmm? Make a difference. Huh? Huh? Why don't you just take a little time a day, get you a song and sing that song to God. Huh? I'll back there in my office this morning singing, God is so good. Huh? Singing, thank you, Lord. Huh? Good. It'll help you. It'll help you. He substantiates every sacrifice. You never do anything for God that God don't take notice and that God don't honor it. I thought about this. The touch of God will starve you for more. If he's ever touched you, you're never satisfied with just the one touch. You want more touches. Hmm? Listen, I kiss Miss Annette every day. I tell her I love her every day. Huh? Why? Because I love her. And I'm going to kiss her every day. Well, I love the Lord, I tell him. Every now and then I catch myself blowing him kisses. Because he's a great God. Amen. He's been good to me. It starves you for his touch. Yeah. I have so enjoyed the last few weeks, God just walking through here. Sure. I've just enjoyed it. I've enjoyed seeing him touch some of you. It's helping me seeing you get touched. It just creates a hunger for him. Then I thought about this lastly. The touch of God will summon you to share the gospel. Acts 1.8 says, The Holy Ghost, when he comes upon you, ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. When God touches you, you get a burden for somebody else to get saved. You hear the call to give the gospel to somebody. You get a burden for lost family members. You get a burden for lost friends. You get a burden for co-workers. You get a burden for neighbors. But the touch of God will help take that burden a step farther. You'll pray for them more. You'll tell them. You'll share the gospel with them. God touches us that the world will see something so different. And when we tell them what it is, He'll begin to work in their hearts so they too can be touched by God. I wonder, how long has it been since you had his touch? How long has it been since you known it was his hand on your shoulder? How long has it been since his presence was so overwhelming? You just said, Lord, this is too high for me, but it sure is good for me to be here. Maybe here today... And he's touching you right now that you need to be saved. I wouldn't leave this building without knowing Jesus. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. Brother Clint's going to come play something on his guitar. Why don't you just come and let Jesus save you? He's trying to convince you right now. I can feel it in my heart. Some of you are dealing with this. And the devil will lie to you tell you you got plenty of time. Friend, you don't know if you got ten more minutes. The devil will tell you what will all these people think. I'll tell you what all these people, they'll rejoice with you. This crowd's for you. Because they once sat where you was and God touched them. Dear Christian friend, how long has it been since you've been touched? You're tired of all the worry and all the doubt and all the fear and all the anguish. You know what you need? You need to touch a God. When's the last time you asked him, Lord, touch me? Who was singing that old song, He touched me. Oh, he touched me. Oh, when's, when's the last time he touched you, friend? He said, I'm now no longer the same. Something wonderful happened. Now I know he touched me and made me whole. Why don't you come and ask him to touch you today? So, God, I just, 
I want your hand. You remember when Jesus went to wash his disciples' feet and, and Peter, you know Peter, popped off the mouth? He said, no, you ain't washed my feet. I need to wash your feet. And the Lord said, if you don't let me wash your feet, you'll have no part with me. And Peter said, wash my feet, my head, my hands, wash it all, Lord. Yeah. Uh, when was the last time you say, Lord, I appreciate the touch, but I want your hands all over me. Sure. Why don't you come and ask God to touch you today. Brother Clint, get your guitar. How long has it been? If you're here today and you're lost, why don't you come? Jesus wants to save you. If you're here today and you're saved, but you haven't had his touch, why don't you come? Maybe he's dealt with you about something else. He's getting his guitar. Let's all stand. Folks are coming. Nothing like God's touch, friend. It'll solve all your problems. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for these that have come. Put your hands on them, God. Oh, touch them good, God. Fill them with your presence. And God, I pray for any that aren't saved. Lord, I believe there's some here not saved today. Lord, you're condemning and convicting. Lord, convince them. Help them to come. Help them to take that step of faith. And come and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. You said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Help them to come and get saved. God, just speak to hearts. Touch people today. Get glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.